Hey guys, how you doing today? I want to show you my beautiful Anthurium Magnificum. Uh, this is an update video. I got her as a small baby in, I think it was like J June or July. Um, I got it from Equigenera. And she was just a tiny little thing. I will try to find a picture and pop it up so you guys can see how small she was when I got her. It only had like, I don't know, three leaves I think maybe. But anyways, you can see how much she has grown if I found a picture. <laughs> I have so many pictures, it's so hard to go through all of them. But this plant is just gorgeous. And look at these leaves. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I just absolutely love it. I know there's a little bit of a glare from my upper light, but I just really can't do a lot about it. it it's so janky to try to film in here in the plant room. I've got windows, I've got lights everywhere, and uh, it kind of makes it a little bit nutty. <laughs> But she does have, she has four leaves now. You can see right here, there's one over here. It's getting ready to go out. She's got like a big hole in her. I think I run a stake, a plant stake or something through her. And then she's got this long, beautiful, see right here, this long, beautiful new leaf. She popped up. I love the colors on these. It's still really soft. Um, and it's got that beautiful uh, bronzy color to it when they first, how they do when they first come out. But, um, so she's still, she will keep continuing to grow. And um, it will get as big as like this leaf right here. This was the last leaf that it pushed out. It had this one and then it grew that one and then it grew this one and now it's got the upper, the upper one over there. The bronzy one. But she seems to be a really easy grower. Um, now, now, right off the bat I want to let you guys know. I grow these in an indoor environment. I don't grow in a grow tent. I don't grow in a any kind of a glass cabinet or a tent. You do see a tent. I have a Mars Hydro small tent back there, but I don't. I don't. Mostly, what I have in it is cuttings. I have my Anthurium or Quianum in there. Um, I put my pinguiculas in there and I have a couple seedlings and containers in there um, a little bit of prop a couple prop boxes but I don't actually grow uh, my plants out I want to grow them in my natural environment in the house so um, that's what I do I keep my humidity here in my plant room anywhere between 50 and 60 percent is what I try to normally keep it. Sometimes it goes a little above 60 percent, like sometimes I'll get up to 65, even 70. I mean if it starts raining or we have a really wet snow and the humidity rises, my plant room rises, which in that case I shut all my humidifiers off. Well not all, I have two. I have one in here in my plant room and I have one um, in my living room for my living room plants and for me but um, she seems to not have any issues um, growing inside the house anyways I just wanted to stress that this is grown in my home not in a grow tent not in any kind of a glass greenhouse or anything like that just all naturally 
Now I did move, I think all of my anthuriums were outside the summer on my front porch. I do move them outside in the summertime. And um, it's just mostly because, well, number one, they love being out there. Number two, it's easier for me to take care of them out there because I can just take the hose and psh, get them all watered. Get them misted. We have really high humidity here in the summertime, so they really, really thrive outside in the summertime out of my front porch. And my front porch is a, a northwest exposure, and I usually put them in the northwest corner of my porch. And they do really well there, but I'm not talking about outside. I, I grow them inside, and um, except for a few months when they get out outside. But she seems like a really easy plant. She's really beautiful. I just absolutely love the veining. Look at the veining on her. It's really pretty. It's not like um, like my crystal on them. Or, I mean, excuse me, not, well, yeah, my crystallinum too, but like the crystallinum and my clarinervium are a lot more, uh, the stripes on them are a lot thicker. These are a little bit thinner, as you can see, the, the variegation on them, or the veining on them, I should say, probably, rather. But it is a beautiful beautiful plant and these leaves get massive I can't see I mean I haven't even had her for a year um, so I, I've seen some pictures and videos of people growing these and granted most people grow them in an enclosure of some sort like I was talking about earlier greenhouse uh, grow tent a cabinet, some kind of a cabinet, like an Ikea cabinet or whatever, but which I'm sure that helps keep the humidity in, but I, I like to keep mine, um, I don't want to grow inside of a cabinet, because then when they get big and they outgrow the cabinet, then what do you do? That, that, that's always my thought. What do you do when they get bigger? You know, and then once you move them out of the cabinet, are they going to grow crappy? Or, I, I like, that's another re reason why I like to get things small, as either a small plant or a cutting, because then they have more time to adjust to your environment in your house. I grow her under a grow light. I have a fancy grow light that I'm using for her. I did have a house sprite. Um, light that I was using and I switched over to the Sansi um, and she's doing really well. She also gets a little bit of light from a west window and a south window. I have all of my anthuriums in one area. So pretty much all of my so pretty much all of my anthuriums are right there in that corner. I do have a couple others scattered here and there. Um, I think I have two more over here. Right here is one. Um, oh, and my big, my big girl right here. Ooh. <laughs> you can't hardly see, you can only see a little bit of her. And then I think I have a couple in my living room, my Betty eye and I think there's another one out there. I can't remember now which one it is. So she's just grown under a a girl light, a fancy girl light. Um, and I'm sure any girl light will work, or even a hundred watt. Well, that's right. I was growing a hundred watt equivalent LED before I got my fancy bulb and put it in. Um, they had a sale on them. Yeah, I got like a six pack of them on Amazon. Um, I think they were 150 watt, and I think it was a six pack for 20, a 21 dollars or something like that. It was a really good deal, and I thought, well, I'll switch over to a couple Sansies and a couple or Sansies in a couple different places where I wanted them 
especially out in my living room. So that's what I did. And like I said, I keep the humidity at around, it bounces back and forth, 55, between 55, 65. Um, I live in Ohio, so we get a lot of rain, we have a lot of damp weather, we have a lot of humidity here in the winter and the summer. But with running the heat, it really drives my house out, so I have to keep a humidifier going. Um, I have had spider mites on this plant. Um, you can see on this, oh, uh, well, you can't see it now, my camera, I just adjusted my camera so I could get the bottom and the new top leaf in, but, um, you're going to find that with pretty much any anthuriums that you have. I've never had anything else, um, I don't even want to talk about the big culprit. <laughs> that everybody seem, seems to be dealing with. It seems like every video I watch, everybody has thrips, and uh, God, I hope I never have to deal with those damn things. But So she also had spider mites. Um, I have her potted in a really light, well, it's kind of a dense, but yet airy, because I use soil, and all of my anthuriums, I use soil, a lot of perlite, a little bit of spag mixed in here and there, and um, I don't really use bark because I don't buy I don't buy bark. Um, I find that when I was using bark several years ago, in a lot of my plants, um, I was getting horrible uh, fungus gnat outbreaks. And I think it was caused from the bark, because when I started repotting over time, I mean, I didn't go through and repot all my plants at one time to get the bark out. And, but, um, I had never had, I've been growing for like 40 years, and I never started using bark before until everybody was going crazy with the bark stuff. And when you're keeping, especially like an anthurium that likes to stay at an evenly moist consistency, um, the gnats really come out of the woodwork. But as I started removing all my bark, and not buying bark anymore, and removing it all from my plants as I was repotting them as need, need be, the fungus gnats kind of went to the wayside. Now, I still get them every once in a while. Like right now, I have a few flying around. Um, but nothing major. Um, I have my, I have a couple sticky traps around, and I have my, my pinguiculas or butterworts. They help catch a lot. They do a fantastic job of, um, catching the gnats or even little fruit flies. But, so yeah, she's, she's a pretty simple grower, I think. Um, other than just keeping the spider mites at bay, which um, I do a regimen of uh, neem oil at least once a month. I do a soil flush, which I make up my solution. I spray my plant all down, the front and the back of the leaves, the stems, the crown, and then the rest of the bottle goes in my soil. Um, which is just neem oil, water, and dish soap. Now, you can add a little bit of alcohol. I don't usually do that because I'm afraid on some of my thinner leaves, um, it may burn them if you get too much in. Um, you would have to do an experiment with that. I don't know. I've used alcohol and stuff on my orchids. But they are a little bit thicker leaves, a lot thicker leaves, and they can take, they can take some of that alcohol abuse. <laughs> but I would be sort of afraid to uh, try them on my thinner leaf stuff. But I, I also have used a little bit of peppermint oil, like a drop or two, and that does a wonderful job. Which actually, I think I'm going to start using that again 
in my neem oil solution because that really and you can you can get it you know a small bottle of it on Amazon or wherever um, anyways I am going to let you guys go and I will talk to you later have a good one bye peace